Well, thank you, Patricia, for uh, showing us some insights and some overviews of the workplace strategy and design guidelines. Um, next, we're going to be speaking with uh, the lead architect, um, helping us understand how do we apply these principles to the actual pilot program, which we're coordinating on the, on the 31st floor. So, well, welcome, John, to the program. Uh, please introduce yourself. Hi, Steve. My name is John Kolb. I am Director of Interior Design with BKL Architecture. And on this project, my primary role is Design Director and Workplace Advisor. Great. So I know the team's been working on uh, the project for a few months. Where, where are we in the, uh, in the design phases? Uh, we're coming up on the end of design development. Okay. Well, based on the guidelines, there are some key principles, and I'd like to review with you how these key principles um, are being applied to this pilot program. Sure. I think, um, you know, the primary uh, driver here was equity, and I the way we've achieved it on this project was really to give everyone, all employees, access to, to natural light. So you know, the way we achieved that was really uh, lowering all the workstation panels um, to a lower height than they uh, currently have and moving all private offices inboard to, to the core. Yeah, we really wanted to take advantage of the views um, and so did the county. They have east views towards uh, the lake, as you mentioned, and the west view um, is a pretty nice skyline view as well. We also made all the um, private offices the same size and all the workstations the same size. So that, uh, again, goes to the equity factor. Nobody has a larger office than anybody else, and nobody has a larger workstation than anybody else. So let's explore principle number two. Can you describe how sustainability um, will be uh, will be used um, in this design. Sure. Um, you know, besides the um, factors, I think we try to design into every project, which are um, sustainable materials, recycled content, low VOCs, you know, green label certifications, LED lighting. Uh, we we really took a look at the the building systems, the mechanical system, the plumbing system. And um, the plumbing systems, we're introducing, of course, the uh, water efficient fixtures, but also the um, touchless fixtures, because that oh. is, that's become really important. Great. Yeah. Um, I, I heard a rumor that we're exploring uh, maybe some green features. Um, can you describe that a little bit? Yes. Um, you know, biophilia and bringing natural elements into the space was important to the county. So we are looking at some live um, moss walls um, and introducing those into some of the more quiet zones in the building. Sure. Yeah. Oh, great. Can we just see that? Yeah. Um, so let's, let's jump to key principle uh, number three, uh, which is a space that's uh, created and inviting for the next generation. Um, how does that, how does that apply to what we're working on? Yeah, I, I think the next generation, um, or even the, the current generation, the younger generation, it, they're, they're used to more of um, what we're calling activity-based solutions um, than okay. maybe some of the, um, the older generation in the workforce. But this is really giving people choice and um, a variety of, of areas to work in based on their activity and their function. So, you know, if I go into the office and I... I have some really heads down work I need to do. I can choose to work in a, in a focus room. That's a, a small room only for one or two people. Um, and huddle rooms, um, we're putting those out in the corners of the building and mm -hmm. they're an open space for sort of spontaneous um, meetings between departments. Sure. Um, as, as well as a variety and sizes of, of conference rooms with um, technology. So, John, what you're telling me is that um, everyone will have choice of, of where to work, different types of open and closed, you know, collaboration areas. Um, what are some other features unique to, um, to this pilot program? Yeah, there's a couple other areas we're excited about. Um, there's going to be a team room. It's uh, in the core space, but any uh, team in any department can move into this uh, room for a period of time and it's going to have a lot of flexibility so they can they can set it up um, for their team and their project and use it um, however they want. There'll be movable furniture, 
uh, whiteboards, um, you know, technology, that, that sort of thing. Uh, the other great space is going to be the multi-purpose zone or hub. And that is both a collaborative social zone, but also a place to get work done. It's, um, mm. it's right on the perimeter glass again, and it's going to have a lot of different um, seating areas, both like high top uh, communal tables and, and banquettes. So again, if you're feeling more social that day, you can take your laptop into that area and work or Maybe it's a great place just to grab a cup of coffee with a, a, a teammate. Okay. And that has the great view looking. So that's definitely, you know, one of the places I would hang out. Um, what about the lobby? Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, the lobby, uh, another great space. Uh, it's going to be really inviting, uh, light, bright, uh, have a lot of natural um, light filtering in. So really, once you come off the elevator lobby, um, you'll be able to see right into the lobby all the way through to the perimeter glass again okay and, and we're introducing design elements that will um sort of give people that direction without signage so you come off the elevator lobby immediately you know um where you're supposed to be going as a visitor okay so no more big brown doors no. you know, glass <laughs> very welcoming yeah. um, again you know the um, principle of transparency it really shows up uh, in the design elements. Uh, tell me, tell us a little bit about the lobby and land bank. Uh, this is a new, a new. Yeah, it's going to be a, a shared reception function um, for visitor reception, um, but also the land bank authority is going to have a, a pick up and drop off window in the reception um, where people can come either drop something off or pick something up. But there'll also be the land bank uh, kiosks where um, people can come on the key at the kiosk and search the database of available properties and and land for sale by the county okay and um, one of the features I know is that this is a locked zone um, so different from before people come in visitors guests and they they won't be wandering they won't be wandering the space so um, right. def definitely um, uh, a benefit there so let's jump to key principle number five which is optimizing real estate. Can you explain what that means? Yeah, um, you know, that's really the way we achieved um, optimization of the county's real estate in this project was um, really the rebalancing of how they allocate space. Um, the main uh, principle here was really reducing the number of, of private offices. And uh, by doing that, we were able to introduce all those activity-based solutions I spoke of before, all the um, focus rooms and huddle rooms and, and um, you know, getting everybody out into the, to the workstation. Uh, we were really able to introduce um, that, that choice of workspace. So with the rebalancing of the space, we're able to give more and more options. Anything else unique about uh, this addressing the, the unique needs of each department? Yeah, again, by rebalancing the space, um, you know, we were able to give certain departments some special functional space. Uh, for example, the uh, real estate management group um, needed a design lab, a, a space where their planners could invite people to come in, go over drawings, um, both in plans and on, on monitors. And um, that's going to be a space that's large enough um, for people to come in, but also the planners will, will sit in that room as well, it's all glass. Uh, so again, that transparency factors in. I, I think that's gonna be a, a, a space that department's really going to enjoy. Thanks, John. Thank you. Okay. Well, there you have it. We wanna thank Patricia for helping us understand the key principles of the workplace guidelines. And thank you to John for helping us understand how they're applied to the pilot program. So what's next? We need your help. If you go back to the kickoff memo, follow the link for the survey, complete it fully, and answer the questions and add commentary to help us understand um, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, so that we can address those in future videos. Till next time, I'm your host, Steve Monaco. Thank you.